Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Island families. We hope you enjoy this evening's edition. for uh, making the time to come be with us today in Rhode Island. Um, maybe I can embarrass you for a second. This guy, I cannot emphasize enough how dedicated Secretary Perez is to making sure that all the people in America have a chance that we even talk about. To get the skills they need to, as he always says, get a ticket to the middle class. Secretary is always saying, get trained, because that's the way to punch your car to the middle class. And this guy is smart, he's a fighter, uh, and I have had the great pleasure of working with him since, since before I was governor. Right after I was elected, before I was governor, one of the first people I called was Tom. We started talking about our community college, setting up pro programs like this. It's been amazing. Rhode Island thanks you, and I'm grateful. Thank you. I think everyone is anxious to hear from you, Secretary, so I um, will be brief. But again, just want to emphasize to everyone here how wonderful the Secretary has been, how much he has been there for Rhode Island. And what we're doing here is different. It's a new model, right? I mean, it's, as, as Jack said, it's a demand-driven model. We need to be flexible to the needs of employers. We need to be hugely collaborative. Uh, the Secretary has championed this, that, he's helped us get it right here, and he's been with us every step of the way. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to uh, bring to you and announce to you Secretary of Labor, Tom Perez. Thank you. Great to be back here in Rhode Island where I spent some remarkable years, and I, I could not agree enough with what you said about uh, your delegation in Washington. Uh, during the depths of uh, the Great Recession, I had so many conversations with your senators and, and your members of Congress, uh, Senator Reid on the, the, the issue of the long-term unemployed, uh, and so many other issues. Senator Whitehouse, uh, who I, I spent a lot of time in front of the committee that he uh, sits on and, and champions. and so. Thank you so much, and it's been such a privilege to, uh, and a pleasure, frankly, to get to know uh, uh, Governor Raimundo. Uh, we we uh, got to know each other really about the day after uh, she was elected, and it was uh, it's been a remarkable partnership, is how I describe it, as well as friendship. And it's great to be in your home, Tim, uh, and to all of our friends in uh, labor who are here. I want to say thank you for bringing us the middle class. Thank you for bringing us the weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and, you know, th thank you for holding, frankly, the original <laughs> patent on apprenticeship. Because uh, what we're here about, and, and I can't tell you how exciting it is to just look around this room and you see uh, the remarkable faces of Rhode Island, uh, the remarkable uh, demographic transformation, and the remarkable uh, leadership at a local and state level. And this is all about partnership. And, and what we're about right now is uh, more than a moment, but a movement. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower brought us the interstate highway system uh, in the 50s. And what we're doing right now is we are building a skilled superhighway <coughs> in the 21st century. Because we have a remarkable set of opportunities in this country. When this president took over, our unemployment rate was uh, going up to inching toward 10%. You know, we were in the worst ditch of our lifetime. Uh, we had uh, you know, so many challenges. And thanks to the president's leadership, 
the remarkable support uh, from your Senate delegation, we've now gone from 10% unemployment to 5% unemployment. And here in Rhode Island, you have made tremendous uh, progress in reducing uh, the unemployment rate. And so we have tremendous opportunity. Earlier this week, we uh, released some numbers. Uh, 5.8 million job openings right now, okay? That is one of the many bellwethers of an economy that is moving in the right direction. We have uh, 74 months in a row now of private sector job growth to the tune of over 14.5 million jobs. And so opportunities remain. And the most frequent conversation I have, and you've got to make house calls in this job, and I do that with regularity, whether it's here in Rhode Island or whether it's uh, out in Washington State, I hear the same thing from employers, which is, I'm bullish about the future, I want to grow my business, and one of my biggest challenges is making sure I have that skilled workforce to compete. And that's why we're part of this movement, to build uh, the skill superhighway for the 21st century. And it's a highway that understands that there are many pathways to prosperity. I had the privilege of going to Brown University. An equally viable pathway is what we see here in this room. You know, apprenticeship is the other college, except without the debt. And uh, it's kind of important to recognize that. And you know, you've, held, uh, you've held this original patent on apprenticeship. But as a nation, uh, and shame on us, we devalued apprenticeship over the course of decades. Uh, and I talked to too many parents and guidance counselors, and you'd say to them, George, you know, hey, you know what? There's tremendous opportunity here, and no, 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 my kid's going to college. And I tell them, apprenticeship is the other college, except without the debt. Remember that. If there's one and only one thing you remember about today. And so what the president is doing in building this skill superhighway is we need on-ramps and off-ramps. And uh, one of the on-ramps that we are working so hard to fortify is that apprenticeship on-ramp. And Rhode Island has been a tremendous partner in the construction of this apprenticeship on-ramp. And we're doing so through our federal investments. We had the most uh, significant investment in apprenticeship uh, last year, and we're doubling down. Because what we want to do with apprenticeship is not only uh, increase the number of apprenticeships, but make sure that we are diversifying in every sense of that word. Making sure that the face of apprenticeship in the 21st century in Rhode Island looks like Rhode Island. And I so appreciate Tim and I were having this conversation about the inroads that you're making in communities, the Latino community, um, Raymond from the Gambia, uh, so many other opportunities. Because one thing that undergirds the skill superhighway is that zip code should never determine destiny and opportunity should be available everywhere. And that is what you are about. Making sure that not only is apprenticeship available in the traditional skilled trades, but it's available in every occupation. So we do a lot of work with SEIU and AFSCME to create apprenticeship on ramps in the healthcare sector. I was in Chicago recently. We have an apprenticeship program that we're helping to seed in the uh, insurance industry, claims <coughs> adjusters, Zurich Insurance, the CEO of Zurich, a uh, Fortune 50 company, started out as an apprentice in Switzerland. And we're importing that model across every um, sector of this economy. And it is all about partnership. The three basic principles of effective workforce have been articulated already by our speakers. Number one, we have to be demand driven. You know, the old model of train and pray. You know, you train people for jobs and you pray that employers are hiring them. That model is yesterday's model. Today's model is train and place. Getting them into jobs that are in demand. And we know that these welders who are receiving training with electric boat and all the work that your Senate delegation has done, opportunities exist right here in Rhode Island. And that's what is so tremendous. The second principle is making sure that we have partnership. Because you know what? This is an all-hands-on-deck enterprise. I've seen it in Congress. There are very few things that are bipartisan in Congress right now. This is one of them. And we're getting real bipartisan traction on this because everywhere I go, and I've traveled to Republican members of Congress's district and Democratic members of Congress, and we have the same exciting story. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And the uh, Real Jobs Rhode Island is all about real opportunity, Rhode Island. And that third principle of workforce, which is that, again, we take the job seeker where we find them. 
And that is another way of saying, you know what? It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter if maybe you got off the rails sometime in your life because we're a nation that believes in second chances. Opportunity can be here. And I meet so many employers who understand that, you know what? I don't care what you did before. I care what you can do today and tomorrow. And that's what you're doing, Tim, through this program. And I had the privilege of going a couple of weeks ago to address his national conference in, uh, outside of Chicago. And the beauty is what you see in this room is being replicated across the country with the help of mayors, with the help of governors, with the help of Republicans and Democrats, with the leadership of the labor movement. And so I'm watching this apprenticeship on-ramp and the Skill Superhighway being built. And it's exciting to see because you know, the destination is the middle class. And we like to look at ourselves as like Match.com, okay? <laughs> Trying to help match job seekers like Raymond who want to punch their ticket to the middle class with employers who want to grow their business using partnerships with the labor movement, with community colleges. And you have a remarkable new president here uh, of Vermont, uh, Rhode Island Community College. And I look forward to uh, talking to her possibly later today because the educational system provides a lot of that secret sauce of success. So we're moving forward. But in the end, we can talk all we want about numbers. The real stars here are Raymond, Angel, and Sarah. Because you know what? Uh, what you all are doing is inspiring. It's not only inspiring to us, but it's inspiring to your communities. Because you know what? Uh, you're not only building the next generation of submarines, you're not only building uh, the next generation of housing and uh, businesses in this uh, community, but you're, you're building the middle class for yourself and your family. And you're setting a remarkable example of what we can do as a nation when we work together. And so that's why I'm excited to be here. And I'm really looking forward uh, to hearing more, especially uh, from uh, our folks who are almost done. And what I'd like to hear from you is, um, what do you want me to tell the president? Okay? Uh, how do we grow this so that we make sure that uh, not only you have opportunity, uh, but everyone who works hard and plays by the rules can have that opportunity? Because Tim told me that you had 400 applicants for your most recent class. So that tells me that there's talent out on the street right now that is raising their hand saying, I want to get in the game. So we got to figure out how to get everyone in the game. So thank you again. Thank you to our local elected officials. Once the local elected officials, always thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. United Way Rhode Island and Work in Rhode Island puts on the Leadership for a Future program. Um, so I'm here to say welcome and thank you all so much for joining us. It's been an
And I, and I really do hope you share that feeling. I want to begin by saying congratulations. Congratulations on completing the program. Congratulations on your commitment to make sure that you are seated here tonight because it wasn't easy for you. There were many of you that had to give up other family-related activities, other activities in the community, other activities around your job to make sure that you found the time to complete the program. So congratulations, congratulations on your effort, and I want you to give you a round of applause. The, this truly is a journey, and, and as you'll find as, as time unwinds, this is just one of the many tasks that you'll have com to complete to make this journey complete, to at some point give you more of the skills and knowledge required to be that leader that you're here to be. And we all know that leadership takes a whole variety of different forms. It's, it's not just and I want to stop for a second. It's not just this room. Look around this room. Take a minute and look around. And think about the decisions that have been made in this room that provide the opportunity for you and me and your children and my children and everybody in this state to have a better quality of life. Think of the decisions that were spent in hours of angst and debate to come up with a solution to a problem to make sure that we all have a better life. Think of how old this building is and how many generations of people spent time in those very chairs making the kind of decisions that we're hoping you're going to make in the coming years. It's my hope that I, I will have the opportunity to see your face along with those of many of your classmates in previous years, sitting in these very chairs, making the kind of decisions that will improve the life of working Rhode Islanders forever and a day. It's a big responsibility, but you've already started. In decisions that you've made as a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a manager, a co-worker, whether you were a member of the legislature, a, a mini le legislature in school, or what we do each and every time we get the opportunity is to vote in the electorate. That too is a sign of leadership. It's taking your responsibility seriously and giving your effort to make our lives and the lives of everyone around you much, that much better. I want to take a few moments tonight just to thank a few individuals that I think are so important to recognize. The program that you're, you've been a part of, the program that has existed since the year 2000, just didn't happen by osmosis. There have been many, many people along the way. This year I want to take a moment to thank Andrea. Andrea came last year in a baptism of fire and worked with Carolina to say, okay, tell me what this program is from the other side of the fence. I've sat in those chairs, and she did that. She was a member of the class, but then took on a leadership role that required a lot of energy and time and planning. So Andrea, from all of us, I want to say thank you. Sylvia, Sylvia is the executive assistant in the office. She sits right over here, the back chair. She always sits in the back chair. She makes my life and the life of everybody at the Institute so much easier every day. And that, to me, is leadership. In the same way we looked and hunted and searched and found Andrea as a leader to be able to, to lead this class and its program, we spent a lot of time thinking about who would we want to be an executive assistant at the Institute to be able to take many of its programs, but we also knew that that person was going to be in this class. 
So she did double duty. She showed up every night. She went from her office chair into that room. But that was only after helping Andrea get everything ready for the meeting that night. So she knew what was in the binders, but she learned the same as you do. Sylvia, I want to thank you so much for everything you do every day, but in particular for tonight, for all of your work in helping all of us get this job done. Thank you. This program has run effectively in many, many ways, and it's not the same program as it was in, two, in, in, in the year 2000. I hate saying that in the year 2000. It sounds like that Conan O'Brien. Um, in the year 2000, it was an idea thought about by a group of individuals, um, but the one individual that's here tonight that was a part of that and so many other things at the Institute is George Nee. chairman of the board in, in many, many ways, and he doesn't have the name Frank Sinatra, but he is chairman of the board. And, and it's really important for us to recognize his commitment in terms of this program, his commitment in terms of being the grandfather and the godfather of the program to make sure that it continues. It's his connection with many people in the community that allow us to have such wonderful speakers. I want you to think for a minute of the night that we had a conversation and some of the political leaders in the highest offices in this seat were in the Institute carrying on a conversation with you as if they were your next door neighbor. That doesn't happen everywhere else. You know, we hear a lot of bad things about Rhode Island. In proportion to all of the good things, there's really not a ton of bad things. We live in a very small state where everybody knows everybody else's business. That's the downside. The upside is, take a look on that wall. There is no other Senate that you're going to walk into that the class that you took is on the wall. But take a look at the names at the top. How many were at the dinner sat on Thursday night? No, put your hand up. How many were at the dinner? How many people saw those two people sitting up at the front of the room at the Institute dinner? That doesn't happen everywhere. That happens because a group of leaders in this state are committed to making sure those kind of things are valued and happen. George made that happen. He went to the Senate president and he went to the, he, he will just basically go to anybody and say, listen, you need to come here. And it happens because of his leadership, but also because they know the role of the Institute in providing the opportunity for many people to find their stride and take that journey to leadership. So in closing, I just want to thank the last group of people, and those are the individuals other than the Senate President and all of those political people, but the people who spoke to you on a regular basis every Monday night about their experiences and their background. And they started with you, because you told your story to other people in this room, and that is a monster risk. And that's one of the most important things you're going to find as a leader, is your ability to be able to take a risk. If you don't swing the bat, you're never hitting the ball, and you're not hitting it most of the time. You just need to hit it a couple of times. And that's what you did. You took a risk. And hopefully they will all work, but we all know better, because some of them won't, and some of them will. And you had those kind of leaders, you, who told your story and made a difference. I remember in the first three nights, I look out here and I think of some of the people that told their story and I walked away and said, wow, because you made a difference in me, because I have a piece of your story, because I tell somebody else, let me tell you about somebody who. So you all have a lot to be very proud of. But I also want to take an opportunity to thank the instructors, the people who came in on a regular basis, sometimes year after year, to say, I think this program is important and I want to share my experience with you and I want to ask you about why this program is good. And whether we're talking about George carrying on a conversation 
or the people that talked about the issues around race. When Jim Vincent came in and talked to you about issues, when Colleen Callahan came in and spoke to you about issues that were important, and including the governor and everybody in between, because they're committed to leadership too. Because in the same way you gave up time, they had to give up time because they believe, and we all believe, even old guys like me, that everything will be okay when we're not here anymore because you're there. But that's your responsibility. You have to pick up that mantle. You have to continue this journey. All we've done is given you one of the other seeds. You've got to fill the garden with all the other stuff. We've just given you one. And it's your responsibility to finish the journey, grow the garden, and make sure that the lives that you affect are in a positive way. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.